Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 22. And in this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about pseudo classes. So for those of you guys who don't know, maybe English is not your first language. Uh, pseudo means fake. So a pseudo class is like a fake class. In other words, it's not a class that we get to make or add to our elements. It just happens to be there and we can style our elements using that class. Uh, so if that sounds confusing, let me just go ahead and show you an example and hopefully everything will be clear, right? So let's uh, add a paragraph over here. I'm just gonna say this is a paragraph, doesn't really matter, make sure you make typos because uh, it won't work otherwise. <laughs> There's always gonna be that one guy who takes me seriously. Um, and okay, styling, there's nothing here. And if I take a look at this in my browser right now, let's hit refresh. So there I have a paragahos, and maybe I should just zoom in to make it a little bit more clear to you guys, right? Uh, so in, here we have a paragraph and we can style this paragraph using a pseudo class. So I'm gonna select the paragraph using an element selector, which in this case is just the P tag. And then I'm gonna add in a colon now what that colon means is, hey, CSS, listen up. We're about to use a pseudo class right now. And the pseudo class I wanna use or select is going to be hover because most elements have uh, the pseudo class available. And so what that means is when you are hovering over this element, uh, I want to give it some kind of different styling. So right now this paragraph is exactly the same. When I hover over it, it's still exactly the same, right? But let me change the color of the text to red on hover and come back and refresh. And now you can see the paragraph still looks normal. Nothing's changed. But as soon as I hover over it, the text is now changed to red, right? And actually if I hover off of it and I hover over here on the end, uh, you can see the text in the paragraph still changes to red because the size of the element, um, like I said uh, in previous tutorials, a paragraph is a block level element. So if I add a border, um, oops, if I add a border to this, let's just make it uh, two pixels solid green, right? Uh, come back here and hit refresh you'll see what, as I hover over it, um, the border goes all the way to the end because the size of the element takes up the full width of uh, the browser. Uh, so that's why even when I hover over here, it lights up. So you just need to always pay attention to how big your element is whenever you're using um, a hover class like this. Now, an example of where this is useful is not only for paragraphs or for, um, you know, a block that you want to change the color of, right? But we use um, pseudo classes like this on links almost every single time we style a website. Uh, so let me just remove this styling and I'm going to jump back over to uh, this main part and let's change this up a little bit. I'm going to make it a link. So I'm going to add in my A tag. Uh, we'll give that an href of http www.google.com, right? And I'm just gonna say this is a link to Google. Doesn't really matter if I make typos, I shouldn't bother fixing them. <laughs> uh, okay, so now when I hit refresh, you can see I've got this plain old blue link. As I hover over it, you can see the cursor changes. Um, it's no longer an arrow when I'm hovering over it. In fact, we have uh, the little hand thing, right? Uh, and when I click on this and visit Google uh, and come back, you can see the color of the link has now changed. It's purple instead of blue, right? So I'm just gonna uh, refresh or, uh, well, how do, I, how do I clear this? History, uh, clear recent history and uh, oh no, where is the clear button? Look at my browser. I don't know, has anybody else got this problem <laughs> on Mac? For some reason, um, now that I've updated, uh, I have to pull my browser window to the other side and then history, clear recent history. And now I get the full window. Now I can say clear, <laughs> all right? 
It's such a weird problem. Anyway, uh, come back here and hit refresh. So now we've got the look, the the link looking normal again, and uh, I want to style this to to look a little bit different. So uh, let's say uh, a normal link. We can give it that color, right? Color blue. So now the link will always be blue, but let's take away the text decoration. So text uh, decoration, let's say none, and that'll get rid of the underline because right now it's underlined and I don't want that, right? But we can select uh, another class that, or another pseudo class that a link has, which is um, hover, which I just showed you guys. And we can change the color of the text on hover to red, right? But links also have another pseudo class, which is active. And active is while you're clicking down on the link. So uh, you can see by default, while I'm clicking down on the link, the link turns red. Uh, and then when I let go, it turned purple. Uh, shucks, now I want to clear that history again. Uh, I just use a keyboard shortcut, by the way, it was shift command R and that's only for Firefox and only for Mac. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we've got the hover state, which is while you're hovering over the link and we've got the active state, which is while you're clicking down on it. And then we also have the visited state, which is after you visited the link, what color do you want that to be? And let's change the color to uh, green or, well, let's make it orange. Okay, so now our text or our link can have four different colors depending on what state it is in. Uh, and by default, uh, oops, Okay, I've been to this link before. That's why it says, uh, that's why it's orange. So let's go history, clear recent history. Uh, and now all of a sudden the whole window showed up. So clear, um, come back here. All right, so a link that I've never visited before is gonna be blue, right? Uh, and then as I hover over that, it's gonna change to red because we said, look, we want our text to be red when we're hovering over it. Then uh, as I click down on it, I left that color as red. Let's change that to green. Uh, refresh this again. All right, so as I click down on this link, now it should turn green. And when I let go, and now I've visited Google, now I've been there, and my browser knows that I've been to Google before. Uh, if I come back, uh, now the color of the text is orange. So uh, that's just kind of like a nice hint to tell people, hey, uh, you might have visited this, this link before. Uh, so uh, that's where we use pseudo classes. Pretty much every single time we build a site, we'll always style these for uh, elements of a link. But like I said, you can also use the hover on a normal paragraph or a normal block or something like that. And there is a full list of um, pseudo classes available on uh, W3 schools. Uh, I find that they're uh, you know pretty good if you want lists of things. Uh, so we also have stuff like first child and first of type uh, and nth child. So I think nth child I'll show you guys in this video. Um, and to do that, I'm going to just break over to a, a new line over there and let's uh, think of a new element to add. Uh, I think I'm gonna add a paragraph and uh, I'm gonna say this is paragraph one um, and I'll just uh, duplicate this line a few times and we'll say two, three, four, and five. Um, and what I wanna show you guys here is the nth child styling. So uh, it's probably best if I <laughs> remove this paragraph for now. Otherwise, it could mess up our styling a little bit. Um, all right, so we've got paragraph one, two, three, four, and five. And I wanna select the nth child. So uh, in previous tutorials, you know, if whenever we wanna style a paragraph, we select the paragraph selector, but I want to select nth child. And what this will allow me to do is style a specific child 
um, or paragraph child. Uh, so let's say int child two, and that should select our second paragraph. And I'm going to change the color of that to, let's think of a color we haven't used yet. Uh, gray, All right? Save this, come back here and hit refresh. And, uh, hmm, paragraph second child gray and child. That should have changed the second one. Let's go to N. Uh, okay, so what uh, 2N does, uh, or the letter N, is basically um, say repeat this for the nth child. So uh, if we're starting with the first paragraph over here, then every second paragraph after that, uh, we also want to be styled gray. So we can make this cool pattern where uh, we have one blue, I mean one gray, one black, one gray, one black, one gray. Uh, and you can use nth child to select just a specific uh, element, uh, which is when you don't use the n. So let me just add in a higher number here, like five, come back here and hit refresh. And you can see that now this one is uh, gray. So because the first one went and now this one went, obviously I'm selecting one lower paragraph every time. And I think if I troubleshoot this, uh, that link is for some reason being classed as a paragraph or being treated as a paragraph somehow. Uh, that's interesting. So let me just, let me just comment this out. and come back here and hit refresh. And there we go. Now it's selecting the fifth uh, element. And I am not quite sure why it did that, but hey, uh, I figured out what the problem was and I worked, around, worked my way around it. And that's what you guys should always do. Right, so a better use case for this would actually be um, if we wrapped all of these in a parent because we are talking about children here, right? We're not talking about um, parents. So the child uh, right now we're going, we're working off of the body. So let's add a parent to this. I'm going to create a, a div tag. We'll end that off. I'm just going to take all of these paragraphs, place them in here, indent them so that they're all even. And I'm going to remove the comment on this because that way it can throw us off if it if, if we're going to be making a mistake. Uh, but I'm going to give this a class of um, child example. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is take this class, copy that and uh, select by class over here. So what we're doing is we're combining some of what we learned in the previous tutorial with this tutorial. So any uh, paragraph that is uh, within child example or within this div uh, that has that class, we want to select the nth child of that and turn it gray. So in this case, we're selecting the fifth child. So come back here and hit refresh. Uh, child number five should now be gray, right? And I can change this to child number two, come back here and hit refresh. And now child number two should be gray. Uh, and uh, like I said, you can also add in your equations here by adding the letter N and what that'll do is repeat it. So uh, every two N child would be every even child, every second child. So now uh, number two and number four both turned gray, right? But you can also play around with this a little bit because there are lots of different equations you can put in here. So two N plus one, uh, basically means every second child beginning at the first element. And what that'll do is turn all odd numbers gray. So let's hit refresh and you can see every second child, this one, skip one. Uh, so paragraph one, skip number two, paragraph three, every second child has turned gray, but we started at the first uh, element and that's what that, that plus one. Uh, means you can also go every second child beginning at the second element and what that'll do is turn all even paragraphs uh, gray uh, So all of the even numbers 
and uh, uh, you can also play around with this a lot more. So you can do every fourth child beginning at element two as well. And uh, if I added more paragraphs, uh, paragraph number six should be gray. So let's add um, what are they? Shift Command D. Yeah. Okay. Let's add a sixth paragraph in here, and now that one should be gray. So there's a bunch of different uh, uh, equations you can put in here. If you understand your maths, you can play around with this a little bit. Uh, but that is how to style uh, patterns of elements if you want to use the nth child. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development, and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field, and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below, and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon, and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.